Hello everybody, my name is Joy Mustafi. I am from Microsoft Artificial Intelligence and Research Department. And I have overall 15 years of experience in artificial intelligence, data science, and cognitive computing. Before joining Microsoft, I was with IBM for a decade, and I also spent time on research at Indian Statistical Institute and also in some academic organizations. I used to support uh, different academic organizations as visiting faculty as well on the same top. Now, I started my career in 2002 on artificial intelligence. And that time, only the research organizations focused on this particular subject. And it was not so popular in the industry as we see now. But what is AI and why it again became very interesting? So first of all, AI or artificial intelligence is the simulation of human intelligence. So we try to build the systems in such a way they can take decisions just like human. But it is definitely not to replace human. It is for supporting the human being. It is for the advisory system what we can create which would actually help us, help human. So AI is not a replacement of human intelligence. Rather, it is a supportive system which can actually help us. And it is not new as well. If you search in internet, you'll get like the history of AI is pretty old. It started in 1956 when the term artificial intelligence was first came up. And from that time till 2017, there are a lot of changes in technology happened. There are a lot of improvements happened, right? In 56 and uh, even in early 90s, if we just go back, that time the limitation of a processing speed, the power of the machine or the memory, the RAM, your hard disk, everything was like very much limited. Now you can imagine like a mobile phone which has a 6 GB of RAM, right? So that changed happened. Now, after that, definitely AI was reborn because we have also enormous number of data. We can collect data from different domains, from government sector, from private sector, from different domains like education, healthcare, agriculture, transportation, retail, finance, and so forth. And with those data, we can actually create an expert system which would actually be trained with all those data. And we can teach the machine with certain algorithms where the machine can then take the decisions just like how I take. Now, again, what I said, right, the decisions should be validated with the human. But the advantage of AI is, first of all, you don't have to go through all the data sets manually. So it's actually helping me to reduce the time, to reduce the effort, right? If you go back to the first invention of human being was the will. And the will was not a replacement of leg, but it was actually helpful for travel, for pushing and pulling goods and all. And that was the first invention of mankind. So similarly, when we talk about the artificial intelligence, machine learning and data science, all of these subjects are for when we want to minimize the effort and we want to optimize our effectiveness, our deliverables, and finally our production and productiveness. So if you want to build your career in AI, I think most of you want, right? So for that, you should focus on few subjects from now. First of all, the mathematics. That is very much important. Without maths, you can't survive in AI. Even if you don't love maths, if it is not in your passion, I think AI is not your field. But if you love maths, if you really enjoy doing uh, mathematical problem solving, uh, using like algebra, arithmetic, calculus, geometry, everything, right? Uh, then I think AI is something where you can actually think you can build your career. Next is statistics. Probably some of you have that in your course. If you don't have, you can still learn. Uh, mathematics plus error is statistics. Why I call this? Because mathematics is certain formula which is like one-on-one mapped it will happen but in statistics we may have get something we may not have so there is a probabilistic kind of model which may be true which may not be so there is an error term 
always there in statistics, but we have to learn that that kind of model because in AI, all of these models, when we think about it, we will predict something, those models are not 100% accurate. But we try to minimize the error and maximize our accuracy. In AI term, we call precision and recall. So we want to maximize those numbers so that we can say like, OK, we have built a very good machine learning model. Now, that's why we see like in statistics, we have the error term, we have the bias, and our objective is to minimize the error, minimize the bias so that the machine should not become biased. Sometimes we have seen in human decision, we become biased. And uh, we become biased and based on that bias, we take wrong decisions as well. So we should train the system so that it should actually remove those bias and try to minimize the error based on variety of data, based on uh, different types of data and uh, from different regions, from different uh, uh, like data types. Suppose I'm thinking about like image data. So that, that can be used for, uh, suppose in medical healthcare, you are thinking about uh, getting different X-ray uh, photos, right? And X-ray images. And based on that, you want to predict like where is the uh, fracture. Now what doctor can actually put that uh, in, in that uh, light plate and check like with, where is the fracture. Now think about like if I have 10,000 such kind of images, and it's very difficult for a person, for a human being, to sit and put all those 10,000 X-ray plates in front of that light plate and get that, okay, where is the fracture? And there can be some mistake by the human because uh, there is a, some scratch or something and probably I can put like, okay, there is a fracture, but which is not. Uh, there is, uh, there are other objective where I can actually push this kind of image. We can have like language, Think about doctor's prescription, right? It's very difficult to read, uh, at least in India, if it is handwritten prescription. So if I scan that and a system can automatically identify what's written there and think about like the in the uh, pharmacy or medicine shopkeepers, they can read the prescription very quickly within two or three seconds. How? What is the intelligence of that particular person, right? So nothing but the data, the knowledge, the experience what that person has. And that is what, like, you already have, like, a lot of doctor's prescription, knows all the medicine names, which I don't know, and uh, our common people don't know. And suppose it is written crocine, that C-R-O, it's, like, very jumbled in the doctor's handwriting, but that person can easily, uh, I mean, tell that it is crocine, right? Similarly, think about a computing system, which would actually read those words and related words, age of the patient, gender of the patient, and certain other parameters based on that, okay, club, clubbing that, like if there is an antibiotic, probably there is a vitamin. If the, there is a painkiller, there should be some antacid. So those are something like related, uh, like medicines, right? So they already have that knowledge graph in their brain. So similarly, we have to create that knowledge graph digitally and teach the machine, okay, you learn all of these so that a new prescription comes. If I scan that, automatically all the medicine names will be displayed or will be digitized. <clears throat> so this is some of the examples what I'm giving. And definitely there are a lot of other things. So when we talk about language, uh, spoken language, you are talking to like Microsoft Cortana, right? Uh, that is an assistant. You can actually talk, you can chit chat, you can search something uh, over voice. And similarly, uh, you can have like different other languages application. So image, speech, language, text format. Think about like essay evaluation. Suppose I have written an essay on your favorite place. And it is very much subjective, right? I mean, every student is writing an essay on their favorite place. So that for the teacher, it's very difficult, like how to score that student uh, out of 10, suppose, right? Now, uh, out of 10, if I, I'm giving like five and someone as seven and someone as three. What would be the parameters? I cannot say like, okay, if someone has mentioned Switzerland is uh, his favorite place or favorite country to visit, uh, then I will give 10. No, so that's not, that. that is again bias, right? We, I should not give that. Then probably I will check the quality of the writing, grammatical mistakes, spelling mistakes, or construction of the sentences, right? That will be my parameter. As a teacher, I will evaluate the student's essay. Now think, if I just have collected all these essays in Microsoft Word and I just purge them in my system and the system is actually reading all of these things step by steps and checking all these things. 
checking the spelling, checking the grammatical constructs, checking the all the content, keywords being used, and really it is actually uh, towards that like favorite place or not. So all of these evaluation, and I can have like those parameters, and from that I can evaluate, and the system can evaluate automatically and give a score, right? And that score can be like from zero to ten. That scale is zero to ten, and it can give you nine point seven six five. Hardly matters. Then probably I can round it off and give it nine or something or nine point five. So that kind of mechanism we have to think about. Like, what would be the application? So first we have to think about the problem, and definitely what are the different algorithms available, and uh, definitely the next step is the implementation part. So the, for the implementation, as I mentioned, the mathematics is very important. The next step is the computer science or programming. I think again you have uh, computer coding in your course like C, C++ or Java. So start working on any of your favorite language. You don't have to focus on Python or R or any fancy names right now. Uh, you can develop your own algo in your favorite most language where you are comfortable. So if you think like C is your cup of tea, fine. You can write codes in C. Okay. You can start working on different. I mean, uh, small AI applications like small regression or a small classification. Just try out like what is neural network and try to write a small code in C, uh, like how the neural network works. If you are good at programming, so these two are very essential: the math and stats part, and definitely the software engineering and coding part. I mean, programming part. So without these two, the data science and AI is, I mean, nothing. So we have to think about these subjects, and definitely the third part, the pillar, where the domain knowledge is also important. But I don't suggest right now that you will focus the domain knowledge because, as I mentioned, if I am working on medical or healthcare, then probably I need to collect some data and gather some knowledge on that particular field. Because I am not a doctor, uh, so I can't know all, all these medicine names or disease names and symptoms, right? So for that, I need to sit with the doctor. Who knows all of these, and I will gather his knowledge to implement into my system. So that is called a domain knowledge. Similarly, if I'm working with the retail, if I'm working with the finance, probably I need to need a financer or like a financial advisor, right? Who helps me uh, in that particular project? Because he, that person knows much better that domain thing, right? I mean, uh, because what is the transaction details and blah blah blah. So those things I need to gather from that person. So that is also important. That's the third pillar. But as I mentioned, the two major pillars are the maths and stats, and the computer software engineering and uh, the programming part. And definitely the algorithm and all, all these things uh, come to the picture. The data structure, right? Programming is not only your uh, C uh, programming. So you need to know data structure. You need to know uh, RDBMS. Uh, that is very much important because you are talking about data, and you should know like how uh, the database management system is, right? So those things are very important. Data structure is also very important, like the stack, your queue, tree, graph. So because in AI, when we actually write those complex algorithms, we actually use all these algorithms. Uh, probably right now you are studying and you're thinking like, why I'm studying uh, stack and queue, right? Why these are not so important? But believe me. Even the matrix multiplication is the most important in machine learning. If we talk about a deep learning, which is an advanced machine learning, the most important component there is a matrix multiplication. So if you're good in maths as well as programming, try out this one. Start write a small program with a two-dimensional matrix multiplication. Then, I mean, add more dimensions. Think about 3D matrix and so on. If you're passionate on computer science and maths and stats. Definitely AI is your career because uh, nowadays, if you see, like the data scientists are the highest paid employees across the world. So, and that's the future. Uh, most of the organizations, starting from the startup to the big industries, everyone is looking for the AI engineer or data scientist right now. And definitely, I just wanted to add one more point. Like people sometimes get confused, like what kind of uh, subject it is. Uh, like AI, cognitive computing, machine learning, data science, deep learning, right? A lot of uh, different jargons. So let me just put a, a simple uh, graph, like how uh, these subjects are related. So first of all, uh, AI is, as I mentioned, is artificial intelligence where we are trying to 
simulate the human intelligence. Now, inside AI, there is a subset called machine learning where we are trying to teach the machine based on certain historical data. But without machine learning, also we can build AI app where it is mostly on the heuristic or rule-based kind of uh, system where you don't need data to train, but still you can create a complex system which is a rule-based. It is AI, but it is not ML. It is not machine learning. Deep learning is a one step ahead of ML where we are not having like a, a feature engineering part, like where we need to get like a lot of data transformation and then extract the feature, which would be the input for the machine learning model is not required. So that step automatically the features can be extracted and engineered by the system. So if we create like multiple artificial neural network nodes, it calls like recurrent neural network or sometimes convolutional neural network. So those are the algorithms of deep learning, uh, which is again uh, nowadays very popular, uh, but it requires a lot of data and very high processing power. So uh, you can't just uh, run a deep learning algorithm in your laptop. So that is, those are some of the challenges but definitely that's a subset of ML, or you can say like a specialization of machine learning. And data science is a super set. It, it has ML, DL, AI, as well as few domain uh, knowledge, as I mentioned earlier, like when we are talking about healthcare or agriculture or something. And also a concept of psychology, concept of linguistics, if I'm talking about natural language processing, so uh, NLP definitely requires a lot of linguistics uh, knowledge and uh, image processing. So those engineering field also comes into uh, that uh, space. So data science, I can say like it's a, a bigger picture where you have the statistics, mathematics, computer science, and all these algorithms together uh, giving you the data science picture. And AI is subset of data science where you're focusing on simulating human intelligence, either using rules or using ML. So ML is a subset of AI and DL is a subset of ML where we are trying to automate the feature engineering part. So just to uh, give a recap, right, um, what I mentioned already. So first, you should brush up your like programming, languages, database, data structure, all these courses, and definitely mathematics and statistics. And there are a lot of resources available in the internet. You can actually study uh, through those. I mean, a lot of videos from different universities, uh, different academic organizations are available from different professors and researchers. So I suggest like go through those, the tutorials which are available free of cost. Since you are now a beginner, you are uh, trying to complete your final exams and all, uh, definitely after your final exams, you'll get some uh, time right before you join to in any engineering college or uh, any uh, other organization. So in that time, uh, I suggest like you do some mini projects. So for that, I can also uh, give one pointer. I have a community. It's a research uh, community. It's called Must Research Club. M U S T Must Research Club, and it's a community is a non-profit organization and we focus, we encourage the students and as well as uh, early level professionals, if they are interested to grow their career in AI field uh, and they can join and you can uh, actually work on real projects, uh, which is again, it's core into research, not for sell or business kind of perspective. It is for academic perspective or knowing. So, and we also create a good uh, network among like multiple data scientists, not only from Microsoft, we have like a lot of other data scientists across industries, across the country. And so I encourage all of you, if you are interested, you can join, just visit must.co.in, M-U-S-T dot C-O dot I-N. And anything uh, else, you can also reach out. You can uh, put comment uh, under this video and I will get back to you. Thank you so much.